Hey what is up guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. Continuing on with my Group 1 car reviews in which I aim to review every single Group 1 car in the game, all 22 of them and then provide a final ranking. Now we reviewed the classic Group C legend, the Jaguar XJR9 yesterday. Now today we're going to review something a bit more modern, the Toyota TS-030 Hybrid. Of course, as always, I'll give you some racing history on the vehicle and then review it within the terms of GT7 itself. So let's start off the review as always by checking out the price point for this thing. Now the Toyota TS-030 Hybrid from 2012 costs 1 million credits, which is a fairly decent price for a Group 1 machine, especially the LMP1 machinery. It has 872.5. 40 pp 529 brake horsepower naturally aspirated and weighs 900 kilograms so a little bit more than the jaguar xjr9 that we saw yesterday and also takes away a slight pp advantage as well now in terms of the toyota ts030 hybrid this was toyota's first return to i guess lmp machinery or le mans machinery ever since 1999 with the toyota gt1 a car in which, if anyone from Polyphony is listening, needs to be put in GT7 ASAP. So this was obviously Toyota's grand return to the world of sports car racing. And well, it didn't go too shabbily, to be totally honest. So the one we're looking at here is the 2012 model. Now the TS-030 did run in, I believe, both 2012 and 2013, before the massive regulation change uh, for 2014. Obviously, we see a completely different look to the vehicles, especially the LMP1 machine. Uh, for 2014 onwards so this is obviously a hybrid it's naturally aspirated there's no turbocharger anything like that um, but in terms of its racing potential how did it do now we're going to focus mainly on the 2012 season although it did run in 2013 it was a bit of a slightly updated spec to what we're seeing here so in terms of 2012 this thing debuted at the uh, 24 hours Le Mans so it was supposed to come a little bit earlier um, I believe it was supposed to come in at the six hours of spa but that didn't quite happen uh, due to a massive testing crash so it kind of you know got thrown in the deep end at the biggest race on the planet which is obviously the 24 hour of le mans so in terms of getting this car underway, how did it perform at Le Mans? Well, it actually performed okay in qualifying, a very respectable third and fifth for both cars. However, in terms of the race, sadly, it went down as a fail to finish. Now, uh, both cars did end up retiring, the first of which was around about lap 80 plus, uh, which ended up with a huge shunt with uh, Davidson at the wheel, uh, crashed into, I believe, one of the GTE machines um, and basically ended up with a huge somersault and a huge accident. Now I can't show you footage of that for copyright reasons, uh, but it is out there if you do want to find it on YouTube. And the second car did retire uh, with obviously mechanical failures, I believe. So eventually it did end up as a fail to finish, but the potential of the performance of this car was definitely on show. You know, a third and a fifth is nothing to really kind of turn your nose at. And I believe uh, going on forward, this Toyota did end up second overall in the championship, just behind the very dominant Audi. Um, of the time so this was the car that was kind of brought toyota back to sports car racing obviously huge shake up in, in terms of the rules in 2014 uh, which i'm assuming they were probably trying to bank on uh, making a very successful car moving forward which obviously they did um wasn't quite to match some of the uh, you know machinery at the time the likes of audi porsche and that really came you know running out the gate in terms of the 2014 regulations onwards they did eventually win le mans though but it wasn't to be in terms of the ts so 30 unfortunately so overall in terms of the racing history of this vehicle it wasn't the best of the time but it certainly wasn't the worst it was a relatively successful car i believe taking around about five wins in the time that this car was running um, over the two seasons so the 2012 model that we're seeing here how does it perform in GT7, especially in comparison to the Group C machinery or more historic machinery that we saw yesterday with the XJR9? Well, it's a, a weird one, should I say. So although it's kind of weighing more, it does feel overall a much, 
I guess, uh, maneuverable car, really showing that the Aero has kind of moved forward in terms of the performance potential of these vehicles. Definitely going through corners, you can expect to be taking the majority of them absolutely flat out. The brakes on this thing seem to be the biggest improvement after going from one to the other. I would certainly say that the, I guess, potential to get yourself stopped in time is massive in the Toyota. Now, is the performance up there with the more modern LMP1 machinery that we'll see a little bit later on in these reviews? Certainly not. You know, it definitely doesn't have the performance. It still does deploy the hybrid, which gives it a massive burst of acceleration. But I'd certainly say in terms of the top speed of this vehicle, it does suffer from the same issues as the later machines as well. Once that hybrid is completely depleted, this thing is nowhere near touching the top speeds of those uh, more historic Group C machines like the XJR9 that we saw yesterday. However, for the more tight and twisty sections that we see around the Nordschleife, this car handled them like a dream. It felt almost on rails. It felt like the way that an LMP1 machine should be. But to be totally honest, that you know hybrid depletion and the fact that you're kind of left stranded once it's gone really does let the car down. So in that sense, it is something that kind of turns me away from these LMP1 machines from being as kind of fun and furious as the Group Cs. And it certainly does show. Again, it's a much more relaxed drive you can almost do it blindfolded there really isn't any you know expectation of this car just breaking away or catching the wind and you know being flung out of a corner it really doesn't kind of feel that way with these more modern machines and i think this is something that we definitely see through pretty much all of the more modern lmp1 machines you know absolute speed out of a corner hybrid depletes and then you're kind of left stranded for the bigger straights and that's really where it is completely let down but it is very much an on rails vehicle i would have to say if you wanted a beginner friendly group one car this is certainly up there you know i feel like almost anyone could jump in this car and do relatively well and drive relatively confidently without having to put too much pressure on themselves to you know keep the car on the road where we see that with the group c machines that they are just absolute monsters so before I did this review, the TSO30 was certainly a car that I never really aimed towards. I always found that the more modern iterations of the Toyota or the Porsches or the Audi were definitely much better. But do I still feel that way uh, when now I've kind of spent a bit more time driving this car and looking into the details and, you know, giving this thing a good thrashing around the Nordschleifer eventually? Um, yeah, I, I really don't feel like this car has any advantage over the more modern models. However, it is certainly a great beginners group one car now in terms of the overall lap times let's have a look how the toyota tso 30 hybrid actually performed so in terms of its overall lap time it was definitely not performing where i expected it to be i honestly expected this car to outperform the likes of the group c machinery just because of how quick it is through the corners and maybe be a bit more on level with the tso 50 which we see up there which will be re-reviewed it comes in with a time of 605.489 obviously racing on the racing mediums as usual and to be honest to say it has a performance point advantage over the group c machines it really is kind of let down down by just the fact that it has such a low top speed once that hybrid boost is gone meaning that it's around about four seconds off of the Group C machines. So the Toyota TSO30, this begins the more modern iterations of Group 1 vehicles. What do I think of it? It's an okay car to be totally honest. It's bang average, it's nothing special and it certainly will be built upon with more modern models. Let me know what you think of this car down below and I will see you in the next one. Take care guys. Peace.